Hey everyone, welcome to Drive By Reviews, where today we're taking a look at the autofocusing system in the A7 III, the brand new full frame camera out from Sony, and possibly one of the best cameras out this year, maybe the best camera for the price and bang for your buck overall. And the autofocusing system really is hard to match up with anything near its competition range in price or capabilities, even considering the Mark II or the APS-C options out from Sony itself. And this is simply because it has more autofocusing points than any of the other options out there. 693 total, where 425 are phase detect, and of course the rest contrast detect. And with that many autofocusing points and with the different settings in the camera, you can basically set it up for using with blog type stuff or product reviews or anything you wanna do and not have to rely on manual. Now, I know there's a lot of value in manual, but a lot of us these days rely on autofocusing depending what our team is when we set up and make videos. And because of that, this is a welcome upgrade in the Sony series. So here we go, we're gonna test it out real quick. This is just indoors with some general lighting, nothing special going on besides some outdoor lighting combined with some normal fixtures indoors. And right now I'm in just wide autofocusing mode. And we're gonna start with just some jumps to something really close. Uh, this is actually using the kit lens, the 28 to 70 millimeter, and I have it at f3.5. So the depth of field is gonna be as narrow as possible but this particular lens is gonna work quite well with the a7 III as far as being able to jump back and forth. The minimum focus range on this is 0.3 meters, so I'm gonna get it pretty close to that. In fact, I might even blow it out of the water here and then back up. And this will be fun to see how well this does. I'm gonna jump out of the frame, focus on the background, jump back into the frame, focusing on me with its wide area focus. Basically, and I have it on balanced settings right now, so you can have it where it's set to focus on a lock. If you have something constantly in the frame, you can have it set where it focuses on releasing, where it is always expecting, or more so expecting something to come in and out of the frame, or you can have it on balanced setting where the camera itself is gonna decide what to focus on based on the focus points you've selected, the area of focus you've selected, and where that is. Now, right now, it's kind of set on everything Right, and I'm utilizing this, especially with its you know, text on there to see exactly how, how focused we're getting, how readable is this, and how quickly is it focusing on me. And there you go on indoor settings. Now we can switch it to a different focus area. So hang on. Okay, here's zone autofocus. And what's cool about this is you can choose these big, large slabs, kind of divided into three in each of them. And right now it's focused on this zone and ends right about here. So as I walk over to this side of the frame, it's still gonna focus on the zone and it should put the background in focus and me kind of out of focus. In fact, what I'll do is I'll come back around through the zone and I'm gonna jump over here. And so it should have me somewhat out of focus and the background in focus unless maybe I cover some of the zone with something that I can focus on, right? Zone autofocus obviously usable when you're trying to do something um, maybe cinematic where you have like an over the shoulder shot and you're trying to put somebody in focus and the background out of focus or the or vice versa where you have the background in focus. Um, of course, if you're gonna do that in the middle of the shot, focus pulling is gonna be a little bit more valuable than autofocus unless you're using the tapping, uh, which some people do rely on as well, tap autofocus. Boom, look at that. Look how fast that is, that's, that's incredible. I kinda, I'm kinda curious what happens if I take away some of this lighting because this is a very well lit. Yeah, okay, a little more difficult there. Like, so this is facing the light source, easy. Obviously with the contrast detect especially. Yes, still pretty fast. Background in focus, boom. I guess it's a little close to its minimum focus range because right here is about yeah, a little less than 0.3 meters. Nice. All right, here we are outside. Hopefully the wind isn't too noisy because out here in Austin, Texas, beautiful Austin, Texas, uh, it is quite windy at times. <laughs> But check it out, this is gonna do phenomenally well and you're gonna find that Canon, Nikon, all of them are really gonna do great outdoors just because contrast detect alone, alone can do pretty well with this much lighting. But check out how well the a7 III performs outdoors. It's gonna be probably snappy, as snappy if not snappier than indoors. As you can see it focus on the background, focus on what I put into the frame. Now this is a little tougher because I have harsh lighting coming from behind it. Is it focusing well? Boom, boom, should be about half a second or less. In the frame, out of the frame. Check out the close detail on the hand. Without lighting. Boom. 
And there you guys go, quick autofocusing test on the Sodi a7 III. I'm gonna take a look at it indoors and give you my thoughts on this really quick spectrum of autofocus. Okay, taking a look at the autofocusing post-edit, it's actually uh, impressive. I like how well it actually matched up with exactly what I was saying for most of the test. I think uh, we'll start with the criticism. So my harshest criticism is you'll notice they've almost slowed down the autofocusing to be smoother. Uh, which is nice because it gives the feel of a focus pull because no one's going to focus pull really fast unless it's in an action sequence or something dramatic's happening. Um, but of course, that always comes down to art and the artist behind the camera. So this being an automatic function of the camera, it was interesting to see that at times it took over probably about one to two seconds to focus. And even when like outdoors, especially when I was jumping outside um, in front of the camera and then out of the camera frame, you saw at times where it... Uh, it didn't fully focus on the subject that came right into the frame fast enough for me to go out of the frame. And at times it even would come almost into focus and then I jumped out and it would right, go right back to the distant background. So that being the case, uh, you gotta keep that in mind if you're gonna use it for something like that where you're coming in and out really quick. But it's gonna be far more effective if one, you make the depth of field larger by giving it a f-stop that's not you know as wide open as 3.5 that I was using to really tax the autofocusing system as much as possible. And then two, you're probably gonna use a different type of focus mode where that was wide autofocus outside as well. You probably wanna give it a specific point so that you jump into that point and it will focus right away. Where you saw even with just a third of the area being blocked off, it focused even more faster and accurately than the wide autofocus. So it's a pretty fantastic system. Even leaving it in balance mode, wide autofocus area, it functions phenomenally well for the amateur or someone who's less experienced with dealing with focus. And for someone who knows how to finicky with settings, it's amazing as far as autofocusing systems go. I should have left my hand out there a little longer and maybe it would have focused on that entire hand and shown exactly how close it could get. I was surprised that at times it did actually focus below or closer than the minimum focus range on the lens. I'm not really sure how that's possible. I've never seen that with any camera um, across Nikon, Sony, or Canon, like I, you know, I've you know tested out some of their recent cameras as well. So that was impressive to me. I've never seen any camera able to focus below the minimum focus range of the lens. But there you have it, the Sony A7 III breaking barriers one day at a time. Now let me know if you have any specific questions or tests you wanna see done with the A7 III, specifically in this video with the autofocusing system, but of course anything else is fair game because I'm gonna be testing out the entire capabilities of this camera over the next course of weeks and months, especially since right now apparently it's really hard to get a hold of one. Now if you're curious about the full specs on the A7 III, go ahead and check out in the description below. I'll put a link down there for you to check out. But besides that, thanks for tuning in guys and I'll see you next time on Drive By Reviews.